Hi folks, I've been doing a bit of filling over this rust area on the Piaggio moped. Let's get some of this sanded down. See you in a minute. Right, as you know, in the last episode, we uh, decided to overfill this with fiberglass and also welded a couple of patches in on top here. I've just put some uh, body filler over the top. This is like a stopper filler. It's a smooth filler. Let me show you what I've done. Again, the whole point of doing this is that I wanted to overfill these seams here so that it made a smooth transition between the two body panels, which is actually a join there all the way along there, as you can probably see. So this is gonna take some dressing to do because it's very hard to get this sort of thing in one take, so to speak. And as you can see up here, we actually welded a patch in here, if you remember rightly. We had a rusted hole there and we put an over patch in here where I didn't actually flush it in, I just done it over the top. And all you do is you just feather the filler in just to take it in, basically. Don't forget, this isn't a, a full-blown restoration. This is just a repair job. I'm giving this bike away to my brother and uh, we're just double protecting this area because this here, when this rusts out, is an MOT failure. So I'm just gonna put you on a bit of time lapse while I get some sort of shape to this now. I'm gonna take some 80 grit paper to this, give it a sand down, and then we'll probably have to refill it again in places. So, see you in a minute. Oh, oh, right, very dusty job, that one. Um, okay, where I'm at at the moment. I've sanded all this down now with 80 grit paper, and I'm just gonna give it a, a, a wipe over now with some wax and grease remover. Again, this isn't the finished job. We've got some touching up to do down here. Now, I'm not really too concerned about this, as I said to you, because most of it's underneath, and it's gonna be under a coat of um, seam sealer as well, so I'm not really too worried about it. But let's just give it a wipe off and let you see where we are with it. So as you can probably see there, we've brought that down to a pretty nice level now. Uh, there's still some holes there and gaps and stuff, but um, I'm sure you can see it's a lot better than what it was. And I'm trying to blend in, as you can see, this line here. It's a little bit bobbly in the top here, as you can see, it's come through the surface there. I'm not really gonna be too worried about that. Again, the mud guard's gonna be behind this. These are the, probably the bits where I'm mostly worried about the side bits where you probably might see, but as you can see there, we've got a lovely blend there as well on the side. And again, if I just clean off on the top here, this again is where we've had that um, two pieces of metal which we've put in here. Again, not too worried about the look of this because it's gonna be under the uh, stone chip garden, uh, obviously painted as well, but as you can probably see there, that's not too bad. This, as you can see there, is where we went flush with the metal underneath the surface and here's where we just had it you can just see a bit of the metal there but I've actually feathered that in as well as you can see and once this is all painted up in this area here with the stone chip which is quite a thick product you're not going to see any of this at all so don't worry about that at all and as I say if I hold it sort of along there along the line there you can see where it kicks up there it still kicks up at the end there where it does there and we followed that line we created that line again with the filler and don't forget, this is just 80 grit. Now, all I've got to do now, as you can see, all around the sides there, that's the uh, side panel, which we've uh, feathered in as well. Gonna need a little touch more there, but you'll only know that when you've covered it all in a primer and then put a guide coat on and you can actually see the low spots there, for example. I mean, I know for a fact I've got a little low spot there where the filler's not actually been rubbed out. Again, I'm not worried about that now. I'm gonna paint over all this now. Once I've rubbed it down, the whole thing now with uh, a 320 paper and that will key the surface enough to take the filler uh, the filler primer which I'm going to be using. Now again if you're doing this at home this sort of thing and you're just going down to your local car motor factors and buying sort of normal spray primer the grey stuff you get 
you're going to see all of these lumps and bumps and things like that. You'll probably spray the primer on, get very disheartened because you're seeing all these lumps and bumps still and thinking you're never going to smooth it off and then you're going to give up. Well, that's the beauty of filler primer, which is a lot, lot thicker that comes out of a spray gun. I think you can get this stuff in cans now, but it's quite expensive compared to normal primers. And filler primer has the ability for you to really sort of put a good coat on. You may still, still see stuff underneath it, but when you go over it a second time, it really does build up. It's called high build primer in the can, basically. And uh, then, as it goes off, it goes off like a filler, which is why it's called filler primer, and you can actually sand it back. And providing that you're sanding back with a bit of care, it takes down all the high spots and all the filler that you've put on underneath, which may have some little divots in it or little sort of cutouts and stuff like that, or where you've not feathered the edges in properly. All that can be f f covered in with some gentle, constant sanding over filler primer. You find that very hard to do if you're using thin rattle can primer, because nine times out of 10, you've probably done yourself. When you start rubbing down after one or two coats of that thin spray primer, you're back down to the bare metal again, rubbing off all basically what you've done. You get disheartened and then you basically give up. So it's about knowing what's gonna happen. And I know for a fact that these edges here, I'm not worried about at all, because I'm gonna be spraying filler primer on these and any little blemishes will be taken in by the filler primer. And that's the difference between an amateur and a, a professional, or someone who does this for a living. They, they know that, they know how far to go with the sanding. I mean, you can spend hours and hours sanding this down. I've been here probably, I've been doing this by hand now, the bits at the front here and on top here, for probably three quarters of an hour. I could have used a, a, a machine, as you know, I've got a DA sander or whatever, or orbital sander. But I didn't bother with that. I thought well, I'm gonna do it by hand. And not only that, it's good exercise as well. It's a nice little project. It's a Sunday afternoon here, and I'm just having some fun out here tinkering about showing you what I'm up to. So anyway, that's why I've done that. Um, so I'm just gonna go over the whole lot of this now, this uh, lower part of the tub uh, with some 240 to 320 paper. Once I've smoothed all that down, it's then ready for primer. We'll apply some primer, and then we'll let that go off, and then we'll apply a guide coat and gently sand back with some 500 paper, because 500 is the, the, the sand, uh, the paper grade you want to be using, 500 or thereabouts uh, for the base coat, which is your color. But obviously we can bring down 500. If we see some little divots, we can put some little bits of stopper fill in on top of the primer and uh, just literally take them in afterwards with some uh, sandpaper. So let's get this all sanded down now to one level so that it'll accept a primer and then we'll see if we can get a coat of primer on. See you in a minute. Right, we're nearly there now, and I just wanted to show you a little bit closer the sort of finish that we want to achieve before we start priming on the original paintwork. So let's have a closer look and I'll show you. Right, well I didn't have no 320 paper. I'm actually using uh, 240 there, as you can probably see there. And again, it's a nice fine paper. It's not too fine though, but as you can probably see there, it's created a nice smooth, flat surface to this original lacquer that was on there. Now, if I take you over to this bit here, probably in the light you can see the original shiny lacquer there. And all we've done is matted it off basically. And this has got loads and loads of tiny scratches in now. And this will hold on to the actual primer. And all you've literally got to do is literally watch this shiny bit here, look. So I'm just rubbing away there. And again, no real pressures needed here. If you find that you're having to push really, really hard, then get some new paper because your paper's probably flat. If it starts off cutting like, like this one, as you can see there, let's wipe that away now. now. As you can see there, we've got a nice matte finish now, and that is good enough. That's good enough to take a primer. As long as you've got that all the way around, which I have here, as you can probably see, right down to my, all my different layers, as you can see here. Now again, once we've covered all this with the primer, we'll be able to see exactly where we are. But I've gone around all this now, and as I say, I've still got little holes there, as you can see, which I'm not really too worried about because they'll, just show up when I come to do my stopper filler. The coat of primer will cover everything here and then highlight all these little bits where I can just get some stopper filler and finish it off. 
So I'm nearly there now, as you can see. This side here, as you can see, which has got the lovely matte finish, compared to this side here, which is still shiny, and obviously, anywhere where there's shiny paint, there's less chance of the uh, paint sticking the primer and stuff, so that's all got to be ended up matte finish. So I'm just gonna carry on now, finish this off, and then we'll be ready for spraying. Right, it's the next day now. It's a Monday, and we've brought down the uh, bike down to Jimmy's unit. There's just more space to work down here and spray and all that. Right, so I've given it a good rub down now. We've gone over the whole lot of it now. We're gonna stone chip this afterwards. We're just gonna spot prime these areas here, as you know, which we sanded down. Now, what we're gonna be using in this case, as I showed you that uh, you can get the normal primers that you uh, get from like your superstores, or you can get the special primers more for professional use. And this is an ultra fill gray primer there. This is basically a high build content filler primer. And you'll know the difference because if you feel the weight of this can, it's really, really heavy. So do make sure that when you get these, you get a good, you give them a good shake up just because it all settles at the bottom. And also these come with a, a different nozzle type. Now this is what you call a fan nozzle. This you can actually rotate halfway and you can get a vertical fan pattern or, or keep it this way for a, a normal horizontal fan pattern. So these are a lot more expensive, but as I say, they save you keep cleaning the gun out or if you haven't got a compressor, you can use something like this. So let's get on with this now. We're just gonna spot prime this, give it a light coat first of all, let that tack off and then we'll go over with a heavier coat just to build up the primer. So let's get on with it. Right, so that's literally all you need to do, a thin dusting coat. Don't get tempted to go and throw it on heavily. You want the first coat just to bind to the metal and that will give you your good base coat for you to go along with the heavier coat of primer in the next one. Don't forget, it is high build primer. It's gonna be a good job and this isn't the finished article. We're just gonna put some heat on it now just to sort of flash it off before he gives it the next coat. So we'll see you in a minute. So that's the second coat now. The second coat, as you probably saw, was a lot heavier. We're just giving it a bit of force drying as well with the uh, hot air gun there, as you can see. So we've got two builds up on it now, and it's looking not too bad. You can still see a couple of little bits, but Jimmy's gonna put a third coat on, and then he'll really lay it on, so then we know that we've got good coverage then. So it's probably a little bit dark here for you at the moment, but that's the curve there where I had them dents. You probably can't see that. This is probably a bit better where you can see a lot more. Now, you remember that big crease we had down there? There's still a couple of little lines visible, but um, again, we've still got one more build of primer to go. 
Exactly the same with underneath here. This has all turned out pretty well, so Jim is just going to put the last coat on now, so let's uh, watch him do that. Right, there we go, three coats of high brill primer, building up the levels as we go. That's now got to dry right off hard before I start sanding that with a 500 paper and go over everything with a 500 paper and then it's ready for its base coat. We've still got the um, underneath here to do with the stone chip guard, as you can see there. So we just left that, it's not worth priming that. You might as well just lay the stone guard on there, the chip guard in one go. But yeah, as you can see now, everything's drying off now. And as you see, we didn't have any need to really paint everything here. All we needed to paint was the bits that were necessary. This will get a 500 final sand down, as with everything else, when it's all uh, dried and hard. So there you go. Put that on. So we're going to let that go off now. Anyway, so we'll finish this video here now. Hope you've enjoyed this one. We are making some progress on this, as you can see. And we'll see you again in the next video. And until then, bye for now. Thank you.